Today I'll be going over memory circuits. I'll show you how they work, how they're made, and some applications for them. So first we'll start with an SR latch. Now an SR latch has a set and a reset line. And constantly pushing set or constantly pushing reset won't change their state unless you obviously push the opposite. Now they're made with two NOR gates wired into each other. So this one wires back into that, and that one wires back into this one up here. And just hitting the buttons will change their state. Next, we have a D flip-flop. Now, a D flip-flop has a data line and a clock line. And if the data line is enabled and you clock it, it will change state. But if the data line is not enabled and you clock it, it will change back to Q0. So Q, Q0. This is made with... A NOT gate, two AND gates, and two NOR gates. So you've got the toggle button wired into this NOT gate here, and wired into this AND gate down here. This NOT gate is wired into this AND gate. This is wired into this NOR gate, and this is wired into this NOR gate. And these two NOR gates are wired back into each other. And the clock line is wired into these two AND gates as well. Next, we have a falling edge D flip flop. Now, this is a rising edge D flip-flop, but here we have a falling edge D flip-flop. Now, a falling edge D flip-flop will only change state when it's depowering. So, if I click the clock button and release it, that's when it will change state. Now, I'll try and give you a decent overview of the wiring for this, because it is a bit messy. So... This one's wired back into this one. <clears throat> the clock button is wired into these two NOR gates here. The data line is wired into this NOR gate down here. Uh, this NOR gate's wired into this one and this one up here. And this NOR gate is wired into this one and this one here. And these two NOR gates here wire into these two NOR gates, which are arranged the same way as in the SR latch. So they just wire back into themselves. Next, we've got a T flip-flop or a toggle flip-flop. And that just has one button wired into the clock and the data line, I guess. And that'll just change state anytime you push the button. So this is made with eight NAND gates and a NOT gate. So... I'll try and give you a good view of how these are wired as well. So this button wires into these two NAND gates twice. I did try and remove these two bottom inputs, but it didn't actually work after that. So I'm not really sure what was going on there. Um, and it's wired into this NOT gate here. This NOT gate is wired into these two NAND gates here. These two NAND gates are wired into these two NAND gates and back into each other. And similarly, these two NAND gates here are wired from these two NAND gates and back into each other. So next we have a JK flip-flop. Now, JK flip-flop is a universal memory circuit which can act as all the rest of them. So if you have the K line enabled and you push J and you pulse it, That'll act as a D flip-flop, if you keep K enabled. If you have J and K enabled and pulse it, it will act as a T flip-flop. And if you just have one activated at any given time and pulse it, it will, or clock it, it will act as an SR latch. All right, so this is made basically, it's pretty much the same wiring as the T flip-flop, it just has three buttons. So it's made with the same, it's eight NAND gates and an OT gate, and the wiring is basically the same, or exactly the same, and you've just got a button wired into these two, instead of having this button wired into everything. So now we'll go into some applications for these. So first we'll start with a register. 
and the register is good for storing information and it will just change what's being stored depending on the inputs which inputs are on when it gets clocked so these things basically get used to store like information in computers and things like that that's not the only kind of memory that a computer has but it's one of the main parts so these are basically i'll try and give you a good look at the wiring for this so this button here is wired into all the clock lines along here each of these inputs is obviously wired into each of the inputs hang on is it yes and the outputs just so i could have a read and write is so this is the clock button and this will also be read and write so if it's off or if i haven't as if if it's off or it's like because it's a pulse button anyway it's always going to be set to read <clears throat> and when i push it it will set to write so and the outputs for these are wired into this end gate just so you can swap between whether or not you're reading or writing when you push the button so i'll try and give you a better view of this so that's wired into that one that's wired into that one that's wired into that one and that's wired into that one uh, and you've got the d line or q line sorry coming out into this end gate here and that not gate wired into that end gate there. So there you go. So that's basically how that works. Hopefully that was a an adequate explanation there, or an adequate just showing you of how it's wired adequately. Um, should be okay. All right, next we've got a shift register. So a shift register will store bits and shift them if you want. If you clock it, it shifts them in one direction. You can also change it to shift it back in the other direction. This also has rotate. So it will just keep looping around. And <clears throat> try and give you a decent overview of how this is wired. This is extremely messy. Um, let's add a little bit. Yep. All right. I'll reset it. All right. So this is a bit messy. Okay. So... You've got the output here, and all right, so the output is wired into these two AND gates. Now, depending on whether or not I have it set to up or down, it'll depend on which of these AND gates are active. Um, so these AND gates here will basically send it to the left and these ones send it to the right or up and down basically so this one these ones will make it go that way and these ones will make it go that way um <clears throat> so these are wired into these or gates here so this one hang on is wired into the OR gate here, so it can activate the next one when it clocks, and these are wired into that one, and these ones are wired backwards. So this one's wired from the up-down button, and that output into this one here, so it can go backwards. Uh, this is wired into the clock, 
and its respective button. So this would be button four. And that allows it to just set it basically and then have a separate line for the clock. So they're wired into the same thing. But this is also wired into this so it can clock it and activate it at the same time. Um, I'll try and get a better view of the wiring because it's not ideal. So this wires from this button and the clock button into there, which is the clock pulse. And this one wires from this AND gate and this AND gate into the data line. And it's also wired into its respective button. So that would be this button here. And similarly with this, this is wired into that button, this is wired into that button, and this one's wired into this button. And so with same with these all gates down here, they're wired into their respective button position. So this would be the first one, second one, third one, and fourth one. I, I can, this, this is a little messy. So yeah, forgive me if it's not an adequate example of how these are wired. Um, but there's only so much I can really do with the way you set you can set things up in this. Um, next, we have a binary counter. So hang on, first of all, oh, that was bad. All right, these are. This one is made with D flip flops, just wired into each other, basically. This one down here is also made with D flip flops. And the binary counter is made with T flip flops. So you use T flip flops for these. And this is basically just, you can set it to whatever you want. And what is the clock? If I clock it, it'll just count, and if I push up and down, it will count down. You can also just start clocking it, and it'll count, or there you go. Alright, so I'll try and show a good example of how this is wired. Um, if, if anyone needs or wants any more information on how these are made or wired, um, I'll try and make or give a better example. Um, hopefully you can just pause the video a lot if you really need to, to sort of check the wiring. Um, so with this, so this first button here is just wired into this OR gate and the clock signal which wires into this which wires into the clock of the t flip-flop and that is constantly on this determines the direction so if that's on then it'll be going down as in counting down and if this is oh sorry yeah if that's on it's counting down if this is off it's counting up and I'll try and get a good look on this. So this is wired into this AND gate here. <coughs> and this AND gate is wired into the next AND gate here. So if this is on and this is on, it's basically telling it to go to the next one. Um, this AND gate is also wired into, yeah, this one, this OR gate here, which wires into this T flip flop. This OR gate is wired into the clock. Yep. And the button, this is just so I can like turn it on. And 
this AND gate is wired into it, the next AND gate. Um, the output or the Q0, so this is wired into Q0. These ones are wired into Q, and these wire into their next one over. And this one will wire into this OR gate as well. And these all, they, basically the AND gates just wire into the same OR gate, as well as the button. So this button will wire into that OR gate, that button will wire into that OR gate, and that button will wire into that OR gate, as well as the clock line. So they're wiring into two OR gates here. And the clock line. And just give you... So this will be counting, and this will be counting down. So that's counting up and counting down. So this is just the reset line if you want to reset it, which is wired into the clear buttons down or the clear down here. And I'll try and move this out a little bit more. So as you can see, that's wired into them and that. That's wired into the button that it's that will it, it will activate, which would be this one here. And that AND gate and that AND gate. And this OR gate is wired into the clock pulse and the clock line and the button that it's its respective button. So number four, this would be eight. So that's eight. So one, two, four, eight. And hopefully that should be a relatively okay explanation on memory circuits. Um, if you want or need any more information, I will do my best to try and give it to you. But for now, hopefully, that is it. And thank you for watching.